Hi, this is Brian with Go Engineer. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the automation tools that are built into the SolidWorks CAD program. These automation tools are designed to allow you to be quicker with your design process when, you, when it comes to making sort of repetitive designs or things that you do over and over. Everything I'm going to show you today can be used in every single version of SolidWorks, from SolidWorks Standard all the way up to SolidWorks Premium. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to look at the design library. This is a tool that you can use to create a custom library of parts and features that you want to be able to use over and over again or with some modifications on each iteration. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we use one of those uh, library features as well as how do we set one up from scratch. So let's go ahead and get started with the software. So I'll be working inside of SOLIDWORKS 2018 for this but it's the same process regardless of the version that you're on. So first I'm going to open up a part file and we're just going to go ahead and create a very simple little box here. Start with a sketch rectangle. And we'll go ahead and extrude that. With our little geometry began here, I'm going to go over to where my library is. And this is on the right side of your screen the little tab that says design library we're going to open that up and then you'll have a couple of options in here one of them is going to be your library features you can add new folders in here um, and you can add subgroups within those um, through the buttons at the top here this is also where you would access your toolbox if you use SOLIDWORKS professional or premium so you can see in my library features folder here if I hover over it it gives me the location of this this is critical if you want to be able to share your library features or parts with other users within your company. Uh, you want to make sure it's on a, um, on a network drive or better yet in the PDM system so everybody can get access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this bushing model that I've got here. I'm just going to click and drag that onto my part. And you can see as I drag this on, I get a little preview of where it's going to place that. So I'll just drop it here on the top face. On my left here, I've got a couple of configurations. I've got a two and a half, three, three and a half, and then a, this is actually my two inch here. It's just default. I didn't change the name. Um, configuration. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the two and a half inch. And now a little window popped up, and if you look closely, the top, the left edge of this is highlighted in blue. This is referencing edge one right here. So it's saying, hey, this is the way you design this library feature, and it's based off of this edge for its for its uh, offset here. Tell me in your model, this one here in the big window, which edge do you want to use for that? So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this edge here and just click on that. And now that I've satisfied that first edge, it turns into a green check. And then this preview change, now it's highlighting the bottom edge. So I'll do the same thing for edge two. I'm just going to pick this edge right here. And now that little window goes away. That's all the interaction you have with that little window. It's really just there for your, uh, your guidance on how to set this thing up. So from here, I've got two locating dimensions. These both say edge offset one and two, and that's referring to the edge offsets from here to the center and from here to the center. So I can change these values. Right now we're looking at, what does this one say? 3.38, I'm gonna just go ahead and make that three even. And the other offsets 4.14, I'm gonna make that four even. So that's located my, uh, that's located this for me here at three inches and four inches off from those edges. And then I have one more box down here, the size dimension. It's saying the bushing hat um, depth is half an inch. I, I can leave that alone, or if I want, I can click override, and it allow me to change this value. For this example, I'm just going to leave that as default. Um, but we can customize basically what values our users can change and cannot change based on uh, what, what, what permissions we give them. So now that I've got this set up, I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check. And now that's done. So it's inserted that library feature part, or sorry, library feature into my part here. And if you look in my feature tree, I've got a feature for that library right there. Now if I expand that, it shows me the individual features that are inside of this. Uh, with that little L icon on them, letting me know that those are library features. So this is basically what we're going to create. So we're going to go ahead and build one of these from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and just close this out here. Actually, what I'm going to do to do this, I'm just going to delete this feature right here, this library feature. 
So now we're left with just a plain boss extrude in that initial part that I had. So I'm going to recreate that from scratch. So I'll pick my sketch plane. I'm going to go normal to it. Use my little circle tool. I'll make a, oops, not 22, two inch circle here. And I'm going to go ahead and dimension this. Now again, notice I am dimensioning to the edges. I'm not dimensioning to the origin. The reason for that is when I go to place this on the next model, which won't be as simple as a little box, obviously, uh, I don't want to have to have a reference going back to an origin, which might be arbitrary. It might not be at all where I want to put the bushing. So I'm going to pick two edges where I think are basically where this thing's going to position off of in the future. Um, so I'm going to set that up this way. So this thing's defined now. Oh, these dimensions over here so we can see them easier. And with the escape key or accept button rather. So that's been defined. So we'll make that little cut extrude here and we'll make it a through all and accept it. So that's my first uh, feature here. I'm going to name this. We're just going to call it ID. Now I'm going to do the same thing to make the hat relief here. So I'll start a sketch on this plane here. Grab my circle tool. Go from this edge and we'll say 2.5. Accept it. That's all we need there. And we'll just ex we'll cut that one. Let's do half inch. All right. So there's the hat relief, or sorry, the the hat cut. Now what we're going to do is put a fillet on here. I'm just going to say 0.05 for those fillets, and we'll do this edge and that edge. All right. So we've got that done there. So let's do. Now that we have our features created, we're going to go ahead and save this out into a library feature. So I'm going to hold shift down. I'm going to select those three features that I want to carry over. I'm going to go over to my little library tab here. And I'm going to say add to library right here. We'll click that. Now it automatically grabbed those three that I had selected. But had I forgotten one or if I needed to change one, I could just go through my fly out menu here and grab the ones I want. But I pre-selected them so it makes my life a little easier. So we'll call this bushing two. And we'll hit the green check. So now the little icon has changed. These have little L's on them. And I've got some new folders up here. I've got reference as well as dimensions. Now if I expand reference, you can see there's edge one. So where is it going to place it off of edge one and edge two? I'm just going to change the name of these real quick. Edge offset one and edge offset two. Oops. Oops, if I type it, there we go. That's just for my own reference, so I know what, what those dimensions are referring to. So that's your references one. Now, the one below it is dimensions. These are all the dimensions from those um, features that we could um, change inside the model. So D1 and Sketch 5, well, that's not very useful. I'm going to go ahead and change what that's called. No, I'm just going to say ID. D2 and Sketch 5, that looks like Offset 1, we'll call it. D3 and Sketch 5, that looks like Offset 2. Hat, what's that referring to? That's the depth. Hat depth. And I guess that's hat ID. And then this one's just fill it. All right. So we went through and named all those. Now, inside of here, I've got two more folders. I've got locating dimensions and internal dimensions. Locating dimensions are the ones that you want the user to fill out whenever they place this feature on a part so that they make sure that they get this located in the right spot, hence the name locating dimensions. Well, for this one, we're going to use offset one as well as offset two. So I just drag those in there just like I would anything else into a folder. Those are both in there, so I'm good with those. That's the only locating information I have because this is a pretty simple little feature. Internal dimensions. This is any dimensions I do not want another user to be able to modify inside of the um, feature once they apply it. 
So this could be something like um, thread information uh, or a, a, a dimension that's very specific, right, for the ID of a bushing for the press fit maybe, something like that. Um, just for this example, I'm just going to say that the fillet dimension is very critical. So I'm going to click that. And I'm just going to drag that into internal dimensions so that can't be modified. So that's basically off the table for the user to modify. Now, I've got this set up. I'm pretty happy with all of this, but I want to have a couple of configurations of this. Now I can go through and make the configuration manually by going to the um, configurations manager applying a new configuration, editing dimensions, and so forth like that. But I don't really want to do that. I actually want to use the design table, which is much, much quicker. So to get to that, if you don't know where it is, you can just type in design into the command manager and hit enter. Right here, design table, I can either click on this I, uh, click on this link and launch it, or I'll come to the eyeball right here, click that and don't touch anything. And SolidWorks will take you to where that exists. So right there, that's our design table. I just have to get through a couple of menus to get to it, but we'll launch it from here. We'll use the auto create option and hit the green check. Now this pops in a little uh, Excel template right here, which is actually Excel. Um, and then I'm just, all it's asking me for now is which dimensions do I want to change from each configuration? So I probably want to change the ID and the hat depth and the hat ID. And to multi-select these, I'm just holding down control on the keyboard, just like I would with any other Windows program. So those are the three I want to make changes to, so we'll hit OK. And it populates those in there for me. All right. So we've got these. I've got the names figured out here. I'm just going to grab these, make sure that these are formatted properly. Two numbers. Good enough. OK. All right, so the first one, the default one, is at two inches, so I don't need another two inch, but I do need a 2.5, a three, and a 3.5. Well, again, because it's Excel, I can use some logic. I'm gonna hit equals, the cell above it, plus 0.5. Now that cell, I can just grab and drag down, and I get all the configurations I want. We'll do the same thing for these other two. I'll say the hat depth is this, plus 0.2, grab that, Drag it down, and same thing here. We'll say this one equals that cell uh, plus, let's just do 0.5 again, and we'll drag that down. Okay, so we have 2.5, 3, and 3.5. All right, easy enough. So that's, uh, that's our design table created. Once you've got this set up and you're happy with this, all you have to do is click outside of the design table and it will save the information. So I'll just click over here in my design window. SolidWorks tells me it's created these three additional configurations. So I'll hit OK. <clears throat> now I'm going to go over to my command manager here, or sorry, my configuration manager. And you see I've got three more configurations above it. I've got 2.5, 3, and 3.5, which may fail because it's going to cut the edge off. Yep. That's because I have the edge sat too closely um, right here. So the hat was was running into the edge and, and over, over, sitting too far over and failing on the feature. But that's okay. In the future, when I place this, I'll know that I have to have at least a certain amount of edge offset. So that's okay. The end user can deal with that when they get there. So I've got all this created, I've got configurations, I've got dimensions and references and so forth. Everything's done. Now all I need to do is save it. So to do this, I'm going to go up here and hit Save As. It automatically goes to the correct folder. I just need to switch this to Library Feature Part. Instead of Default Part File, I'm going to go to Library Feature Part. It goes into this uh, folder right here. We'll call it bushing three. Save that. So now I've got bushing three right here. So now before you go and apply the feature, you've got to close out the library feature part. So I'll close this one out. I'll open up a new part. We'll go through our same steps here. Make a quick little rectangle.
All right, there's a little block. Go to our library, design library. I'm gonna go over here in bushing three, the one we just made, grab that, drag that in. You see I get a little preview, throw it right there. I gotta choose a configuration, we'll say two and a half. And same thing as before, I gotta pick my edges. That's edge one. Now it's asking for this one, that's edge two. And that is now positioned. I need to change my values here. So I've got, let's just make that an even three. I'll make that 2.5. Now right here, again, these are the dimensions. These are the ones I did not put into that internal dimensions folder. So you notice you don't see fillet as an option here. I put fillet in internal, meaning you can't touch this thing. It has to stay put. So we've got that right here. Now once I'm happy and I'm ready to go, I'll hit the green check. And it applies it. So there it is. There's my library feature with all of the information stored inside of it. <clears throat> Last little tip on this, if you need to for some reason, you can always right click and then dissolve the library feature right here. And it'll basically break out all those features individually into uh, standard features inside of your part. So now those are all standard features. You can go in and change any of the sketch information and so forth. Um, typically, uh, as you're using library features, you're probably not going to dissolve these uh, unless there's a dramatic change you need to make, in which case, maybe a library feature probably wasn't the best idea in the first place. These are really meant for you know, repetitive features, uh, grease fitting cutouts, uh, threaded inserts, um, any, any kind of thing that you're gonna use over and over and over is a really good use case for library features. All right, so that's that first section. Let's move on to the next tool I wanna talk about.